We're here at the 3GPP plenary in Lisbon and I'm joined now by Georg Meyer who is the 3GPP CT chairman. Georg, good to speak to you again. Thanks for having me here. Now there's been a lot of emphasis this week on the radio side of 3GPP's work but that's not the only aspect as we move towards 5G. Can you give us an update on the progress that's been made in the core network? Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, the radio is a very important part of what we're doing in 5G. But also, when we're looking at 5G as a whole, um, radio and the core network need to fit together. And this work is obviously done in parallel. So, the RAN groups do uh, radio and SA and CT groups, we do the, the core network. On the stage 3 level, that means on the protocol level, that is where, where the CT groups are working, uh, we have now... Uh, during the last quarter of a year, we have finished the studies on 5G. Every working group had specific studies, looked at their specific uh, issues, such as slicing, um, service-based architecture, transport protocols, and so on. Um, these studies have completed, and that means we have now a very clear idea where we want to go, which protocols we want to adopt, or which protocol extensions we need to uh, create. And so after the study phase, we are now in more or less the middle of the, um, uh, of the normative work. So that is where we really write the standards that uh, later on, once they are completed, uh, can be implemented. So the work at the moment is, as I said, normative work just started and um, we foresee completion by June. 2018, September 2018, somewhere around that, for release 15, which is the first phase of 5G. We will have a second phase uh, until the end of 2019. And can you tell me more about the work that you do with regards to service-based architecture? Yeah, service-based architecture is practically the communication of the entities within the core network of the 3GPP core network. So these entities, they are not boxes anymore as uh, we have them in former days, but they are like um, logical entities that can be created on the fly, so instantiated. So we're thinking of a virtualized network here. And these entities communicate with each other by means of protocols and uh, application programming interfaces. So. Practically what we did, we had long discussions on how to realize uh, this service change, like the, the change in the architecture towards more uh, service focus, and uh, decided to go with an approach which is already widely accepted in the um, IT industries. It's called RESTful. So this is an idea how or a paradigm that describes how APIs and how services should work in such scenarios. Um, so we took already uh, decisions on how these APIs should be specified, uh, that we will use HTTP2 as a transport protocol for them, and we have a very clear idea how the different functions should expose their functionality to the other functions. So are you using the RESTful work to ensure that the APIs are compatible with, with other aspects of the network and any other work that 3GPP is doing? So first of all, API work, like um, that um, functionality is provided via application programming interfaces, this is a, a broad concept, as I said, in the industry. So uh, that's practically done everywhere. And we are now adopting more and more to, to this paradigm. And also inside 3GPP, we have like uh, several areas where we work with APIs. So we have, as I said, the service-based architecture, where it's about the core communication. Then we expose the capabilities of our network to the outside world, to third parties that can provide application servers. And these are the northbound uh, APIs or not northbound interfaces. And this is already happening from um, 4G, so LTE on, but uh, we're practically using the same paradigm here as we decided for service-based architecture. And then we have now a study ongoing, or, well, it's, the study has completed. This is in, um, in the system architecture groups where they're looking at KPIF, 
So it's more of a generalization of these APIs and a long-term view on how we should develop them. So, but basically what we're doing is we're using this paradigm to give the people on the outside, application providers on the outside, the capability to easily access our functionalities, but also be using this paradigm internally for our own communication within the 3GPP core. Can I move on to some work, interesting work that the Internet Engineering Task Force is doing on, yes. on, the, on the QUIC protocol? Can you explain what the QUIC protocol is, why it is possibly significant for our industry and how 3GPP may or, or, or may not adopt the work? The work between IETF and 3GPP, this is always quite an interesting thing and my role uh, as the CT Chair is also to be the liaison person towards IETF. And we took a considerable time and effort during the last two years to make this communication better. Uh, also in looking at the API work, HTTP2, these are issues that uh, practically we need to go to IETF and work to together with them in order to achieve this. Uh, the QUIC protocol is within the protocol stack that we have, uh, is foreseen to be a replacement of TCP and TLS. So TCP is the major transport protocol when, um, in the network and TLS as a security mechanism, practically. Um, it's a very interesting work that's ongoing currently in IETF. For 3GPP, we said in release 15, which we are doing now, we can't adopt QUIC yet because the work on it has not finished in IETF. But in release 16, we will do an evaluation whether it's worthwhile to adopt a quick for our internal core communication, but also, of course, for, for the rest of the network. Discussions are currently ongoing in IETF um, on, on certain aspects of quick, and one of them is the protocol headers, practically the, the information that the protocol exposes uh, um, are intended to be encrypted. And that uh, means that the information is not visible to the boxes in the network. So it's only end-to-end -end that uh, this information can be seen, but not in the middle. And this is quite a challenge to those people who provide the network, as they can't uh, see why certain information is sent. Is it due to error cases? Is it due to normal operation? And this is currently heavily discussed in IETF. And um, I'm mentioning this because I think this is a very interesting um, line that is running between 3GPP and IETF that we, I think, have to cross more constantly or more often that uh, people participate in the work in IETF in order to make clear what our requirements are, what we need from protocols that we are adopting. So quick, I think, is a, is a great thing. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to the work we'll do in evaluating it, but it would also be good if people who come with a 3GPP mindset would give uh, some input into the IETF work that's ongoing. Well, Georg, let's hope that happens, but for now, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Guy.